Hello everybody, my name is Rainer and welcome to Rainier Books. Today another single review of a book that I finished two days ago. I want to talk about a beautiful summer read about The Guest by Emma Klein. Emma Klein was born in 1989 in, I think it's called Sonoma Valley, yeah, it's a Sonoma County in California in 1989. She studied in the state of Vermont, she also went to Columbia University, and in 2013 she started publishing stories. That first story that she published I think already got her an award, and then in 2016 she was ready with her first novel. Eleven publishing houses did make bids to publish that novel, and Random House won the bid and they paid her a pre-advance payment of two million dollars. That's quite a lot of money for a young author of 27 years. The Girls is a book about a girl who is uh, at the time in the 1960s when it plays during the Charles Manson cult and the girls that surrounded Charles Manson that killed a lot of people in Hollywood. This girl was a part of that cult. She didn't kill anyone and she reflects from our time back to that time when these things happened that influenced her life enormously. Um, the girls won a couple of awards and in 2020 her short story collection Daddy comes out. And now in May 2023 we see and we saw The Guest, the second novel of Emma Klein. It is a completely different novel from The Girls. She has said that she got the idea to write this book by a short story she read, a very famous short story that I haven't read yet, by John Cheever from 1964 called The Swimmer. Surprisingly, I think when I looked at Booktube, there's little mentioning of this book, The Guest by Emma Klein, right now. Almost nobody has refuted it, and I think this has reviewed it, and this might be the first review in a longer, longer review that is appearing on Booktube. It is the story of Alex, a 22-year-old woman who claims that she comes from upstate New York and we meet her in the summer, the end of the summer. It's late August, early September and Alex is sort of running around. She's 22 years old. She is, some people call her in reviews a prostitute. I wouldn't go that far. I would call her a woman who is sort of finding sugar daddies to finance her life. She's very keen in sort of finding someone who pays for her, who gives her accommodation. She's trying to, we don't know where she comes from. And this is also a novel of class because we meet her in the Hamptons, probably very likely the Hamptons, Long Island, where the prices for the residential prices for real estate are among the highest in the whole United States. She is, Alex, in the beginning of the novel, she is affiliated, she's in a relationship or whatever you might call it, with a guy called Simon, who is 30 years her senior, who's a very rich guy. He spends the summer in the Hamptons and she had to run away from a guy named Dom, who she was together with earlier in the city, probably New York City, and he, she stole a lot of money from him and uh, now she is quite satisfied and quite happy that she's with Simon because Simon is sort of guarding her, not knowing the story of Dom. She always wants to tell Simon about it, but she never does it. So Alex goes to a party with Simon at another rich people's house with swimming pools, swimming pools all over the place in this book. Swimming pools and beaches and water is all over the place. Simon, uh, at that party, Alex drinks a little bit too much. She often drinks a little bit too much. And that party she does, she drinks maybe two drinks too much or three drinks too much because she ends up in the swimming pool with the younger lover of the host of the party. And Simon comes to that pool and he, everybody sees that couple. Uh, they don't do anything with each other, but they are in the pool together. And this embarrasses Simon. Simon is embarrassed and he asks uh, Alex to leave the house. He throws her out of the house. And uh, another thing had happened because Alex has also damaged Simon's very expensive car and didn't tell him about it. So she is thrown out. But Alex doesn't leave the island, she doesn't leave the Hamptons. Firmly believes that Simon, who is planning a huge party at his uh, house on uh, Labor Day, which is always the first Monday in September in the US, that Simon will forgive her and that she will be able to continue her life 
with him. She just needs to survive a couple of days, five, six days until that party. We have entered a world, we are in this novel, in a world where everyone you meet, everyone you see, everyone Alex meets, and Alex herself is a pretender. But Alex is only the guest. She is the guest. She's the only one on this whole island, it seems, who doesn't have money, who is not rich, who has not inherited, who has not a house with a swimming pool. She just desperately wants to be a part of it. She pretends to Simon because Simon, Simon doesn't know that she makes her homeless, actually, because she always told him that she has her own apartment. And Alex is basically somebody I would call a drifter. She's drifting around by paying for accommodation, for clothes, for food, with her body. What she wants and what she actually is hoping to get, what she's dreaming of, we never learn that because Alex is also, like all the people in that novel, a very dull and almost contentless human being. We spend a lot of time with Alex in swimming pools, in her bikini, at the, sometimes naked, in, at the beach, in terribly expensive houses, in clubs. We see parties and we enter parties that are extremely boring. Alex is totally bored, but when somebody asks you on a party like that, everyone says, the party is so funny, it's so entertaining, it's so beautiful. Well, so when Simon tries, when Simon is kicking her, Alex out, Alex tries to call other men that she has been with before, but nobody of her former sugar daddies or whatever the men were to her, no one wants her back. And she carries on, but she's very good in reading people. She, especially in reading men and men's desires for younger women and for women in general. And she always sort of gets into situations in that novel. She's trying to survive one more night, one more night. Um, going from, from this to that, um, she leaves a trail of destruction and also of different incidents. At Simon, she ended with another guy in the pool, with dozens of witnesses watching. She caused damages to Simon's car. Later, she will scratch a very expensive painting in another house in the Hamptons with a fingernail and makes a mark on it. And she leaves a 17-year-old boy, a rich kid, of course, behind in complete desperation after having had a love affair, a short fling with him. At the same time, she is uh, extremely scared of Dom. Her mobile phone is not working because it went in the pool together with this guy in the beginning of the novel. It works from time to time, but it always sort of breaks services. Uh, it's always lose services as well. Alex is not a nice character. She's the main protagonist of this book. She is extremely self-centered. She tries to read people to her advantage and very often she guesses right in seeing others' interests and desires and reactions in the future. At the same time, Ali, Alex is not very um, intelligent. She has no past. She doesn't tell anyone about her past. Her past is way behind her. In the world she's trying to become a part of, where wealth is mostly inherited, her only currency is her body and her willingness to have sex with rich men. The language in this book, The Guest, is very beautiful. Uh, every paragraph is a pleasure to read, and I could not put this novel down. I read it within two or three days. It reminded me, actually, of another book that I read two years ago that also wasn't that much talked about on booktube at the time and that's lawrence osborne's the glass kingdom which also is a novel about a young woman her name is sarah she is in bangkok thailand also in a very strange and weird atmosphere in that glass compound big glass compound in bangkok where everyone has secrets and uh, it reminded me a lot of this because of the loneliness and also the emptiness that is in both of these books. Emma Klein, I think, establishes herself with this book as one of America's great young writers with this thoughtful, well-crafted, entertaining summer novel and delivers a real summer book with all its beaches and pools and clubs and a protagonist who mostly wears bikini. And some people have said that there are so many questions raised in this book and there are no answers. But folks, reading is not about to give you answers and authors are not responsible for giving you each answer to every question that you might have. You are responsible, and that I think is my take on literature, I am responsible for getting the answers, for making something out of this book. And I made a lot of the guest by Emma Klein. It was a pleasure to read, and I actually want to read a little part of it 
in the end of this review. Alex is drifting around on the island. She is looking for the next, she's looking for the next possibility, the next person, the next group of people that where she can be a guest to survive another night in this environment. So she's on the beach, we're on the beach. To the left of the main beach, more beach, more crowds. To the right, an open expanse. Alex went right. A ways down there was a brick building with a brick terrace edging onto the sand and bright blue umbrellas set up in tidy lines. As she got closer, she saw a private lifeguard, dressed differently from the public one, who surveyed a square of ocean marked off with boys. Odd to see brick at the beach, the squat brick building with its white terrace. It didn't look right, too cultivated and old-fashioned for this landscape. This must be the club, a place she had never been, only heard about. The beach club was for the worst people, Simon said, a place where all their noxious allegiances to race and class could be laundered by nostalgia. They turned away most applicants. It occurred to her, in remembering Simon's disdain, that probably he had applied and been rejected. Alex hung off to the side. After a while, she could tell which people walking past would veer up the steps and into the club, and which people would not. The club looked sparse, almost military, but no matter. It didn't make a difference what was behind a rope. Really, it just mattered that there was a rope. The people on the terrace needed the people walking past, just as the people walking past needed the people on the terrace. The only drama came when an outsider stopped to rest in the shade of an umbrella and sat down on one of the beach chairs. The woman glanced around, face open as a dinner plate, tried to understand where exactly she had found herself. Not a minute passed before a man in a polo shirt came over and bent down to say something to the woman. Alex watched this happen, watched the error being corrected. Like the couple at Helen's party, ejected from the sphere where they didn't belong, only this woman was apologetic, eager to participate in her own removal. The man Alex figured was some more subtle version of a bouncer, sifting through the social information on offer and deciding who was an interloper and who was not. Read this, it's great literature. And one of my candidates for the National Book Award, my prediction for that comes in a few weeks. Thanks very much for watching this review and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and slap me a like and I see you soon. Bye.